We're here in Westford, it's late at night, and we're at Trent Cooper's Bakery, where for the past three years, he has been making Trent's bread. My goal was to try to develop a bread that I've only had in my dreams. He was an apprentice of Gerard Roubaud. Yeah, Gerard was a world famous guy. Westford, they named the road after him. And is this similar to Gerard's bread? It's very similar. I use the same flour. It's a King Arthur all purpose. I use spelt just like Gerard used, but the recipe is different. A local Vermont version of a Pond de Campagna from the pre industrial revolution, so like 1750s and before. Basic country bread. All right. We're going to be here for the long haul. And at 3 a.m., we're going to have some fresh French sourdough batards. Mm. And the cool thing about gluten is you don't need to knead the bread, no pun intended, <laughs> because this is an old process. There's no refrigeration. So when you begin, the dough's at like 81. There's no, there's no change in that. The train's moving. You can't stop it. 11. She's been rising since 5 a.m. Yeah. And, and it's all about the lemon. That's the, that's the money. She's the one who make, does all the magic. Yeah, the apprenticeship was uh, mainly the leaven. Ooh, I smell her. Is that what I'm smelling, the leaven? Yeah. So now she's just gonna, gonna rest. She's a she. Well, she's non-binary, but I refer to it in the feminine form. Normally I wake up at like 5 p.m. Just continue through the night mixing and shaping and baking. The solitude is amazing. To be alone, to not have distractions. The world is quiet at night. Scraping it here, pulling it out of the box, shaping it. Every time you move it, it affects how she's going to come out. So even though touching her is important, not touching her for a certain amount of times is also important. No, she sleeps. And then when it's done rising, we get the, what my sister calls the gloopity gloop. Ooh, the gloopity smishy smashies. She's so cute. <laughs> the difficult part is getting the temperature of the oven to the right temp at the same time that the bread is ready. The idea by just doing one loaf of bread is to do it every single day over and over and over again. Give it 100% of your focus, then you're gonna potentially find out how good you can become at one thing. It looks nice now, but for a long time, I didn't know how to do it. And the dough would be like hanging off. So this is the pre-shape, you're just getting it ready for the final shape. Feeling for large bubbles. Do you feel like you have found your purpose in some ways? When I was baking a lot of free bread for the community during the pandemic, that really felt like I had a purpose. I made a post on Reddit to let people know that if they uh, are hard on times and they need, would like some food and some bread, I'm, I have plenty of time and I can make them some bread. And the community really responded to that. Have people started calling you the bread guy yet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a tread? <laughs> like, yeah, you know. Then um, sometimes they'll take pictures of me and they'll send it to their loved ones. They're like, look who I met. I'll have a small little crowd around the bread aisle. And they're all asking me questions. People really identify with the bread. I do like it when they share their stories with me, what the bread means to them or how they eat it. Aww. Isn't that neat? That's super sweet. Make me a little uh, things for the Christmas trees. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's so intimate. It's like you've touched every single person's bread. Oh yeah, many times. Several times. <clears throat> Touch it when it mixes, touch it when it puts it on the bench, touch it into a pre-shape, touch it into the main shape. Then I score each one, and then I vacuum each one, and then I bag each one. 
Each loaf is, uh, I really give a shit about it. Using just that little part of your hand. Voila! It's a huge risk to take a nap because the timing with the dough and the steps is imperative. The process is long, maybe like eight, nine, ten hours, but even though it's a long process, when the bread's ready to go in the oven, I have like a a five minute window either way. It's 1 10 a.m. Yeah, in the morning. Mm-hmm. How you feeling? I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Tired. Once that coffee kicks in, I'll be ready to go though. And it's almost done. Half half the day is over. First one goes in, the first board goes in, then yeah. it's a race. Okay. Then I move. Um as quickly as possible. Okay. The faster I get all the loaves in the oven, the better they're gonna be. Recently, uh, in the middle of January, after, after three years, of roughly 77,000 plus loaves, I finally have gotten to a, a bread formula where I can replicate it every day and it's good. In the beginning, it's making big adjustments and then as time goes on, the adjustments get smaller and smaller and smaller. The only last piece to the puzzle was to reduce the mixing time by seven seconds. It's really coming along. Very, very hot in there. 600, 600 degrees right now, 610. Oh, babies, look at that. <laughs> People do that little like, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, when do we get to eat it? 20 minutes or so. You're killing me! What will happen will happen. You need to let things go. If you fail every single day, it's not a failure anymore. Like, it's not a negative thing anymore. It's part of the process. I'm getting off all the ash from the oven. Still gonna continue to um, try to improve the bread. What the future holds is not known. What tomorrow will bring, I don't know. Okay, it's 2.30 a.m. and this batard is fresh out of the oven. The money is the crumb. It's soft and it's supple. It tastes like a, a velvety tripe. And when you bite into it, it's, it doesn't fight back. It kind of dances with you in your mouth. Totally worth staying up till 2.30 a.m. And we will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. Mm. I, do, I do knit, um, but I'm terrible at it. Do you have some knitting I can film me doing? No, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> it is so embarrassing. Why? It is because what I'm. What part's embarrassing? Because you're learning. Yeah. Well, yeah. You learn. I mean. Well, let me learn off camera. <laughs>